Hello everyone, Tune World here. Hopefully you're all having a wonderful day whenever it is that you're watching this video. Today, I'm going to be showcasing to you a replay between me playing Gold Pride Punk and my friend playing Bestial Control. The reason why I'm doing this is to give you all some real-time gameplay so that you can understand how Gold Pride Punk plays in actual duels, given that the test hand videos and the combo videos I put out, even though they are good, they only showcase how to play the deck within the context of a vacuum. In real tournaments, you're going to be faced with a lot of unique situations that require you to think beyond just bread and butter combo sheets. And so this is what this series is intended to do. Remember to like and subscribe if you do like this type of content. Remember to leave a comment below if there's anything you catch during the video that you'd like to mention and or for meta purposes, if there's anything you would like me to improve upon for future iterations of these replays. Otherwise, without further ado, I'll get straight into my replays. So we're going to start with game one with a series of rock, paper, and scissors. I we're both just, you know, going at it. And eventually I get to go first because Gold Pie Punk, you want to go first. So I choose going first after winning the rock, paper, scissors match. And we draw into an okay hand. The reason why I say it's okay is because even though we have opened Gold Pride Punk combo, we have the Itali to get two Zaymin and the carry to follow up. During the rest of the punk combo to make Chariot carry, this hand doesn't have a lot of extenders to play around hand traps, and so we have to usually be careful in how we execute these hands. So Itali is the first play you're gonna make. The Captain Carry could be normal summon, and then you could search to start your engines. That could be a valid play because you could potentially bait out an interruption since your opponent might think you don't have any punk cards since you're normal summoning the carry and then we can go e -tally. But in this case, I go e instead. We summon Zaymin. There are two options here. You can search the Foxy Tune or you can search the Shere Kusai. I search the Shere Kusai. The Foxy Tune would have given us more options, but the fact that it has to discard a card in order to summon whatever you want to didn't vibe well with me. So I choose to search the Shere Kusai instead. We summon the Shere Kusai. Shere Kusai will activate and go into the Rising Card play. The Deer Note play using Foxy Tune would have been safer because in the case that they ask you or something, you still have the Zaymin on field. Whereas in this case, the Shere Kusai will put you into a situation where you have Rising Carp Ash and then you have nothing on board to use the Captain Carry with to make the Cherry Carry. But I am what you would call a high impact player, and I make the right call that uh, they don't have any hand traps. Realistically, you shouldn't do that though. I just like to play a little bit on the edge. And so here, we search the field spell using Wagon, and we go through our normal fun place. So, link synchro those two off, go into Dragon Drive. Dragon Drive will search here, and the Deer Note will summon back the Rising Card. Remember to keep your Deer Notes Chain Link 2, or sorry, Chain Link 1. Reason why is because at this point we've cleared any potential Imperm, Ash, or Veiler for the most part, since Rising Carp would be the high target for that. And so it's okay if the Dragon Drive still gets Ash or Impermed or Veilered. We want to have the Deer Note resolve, and so making it Chain Link 1 dodges any Skullmeisters or Ghost Bells, which even though they aren't played that often in this format, you never know when they might show up. So the Dragon Drive will search Madam Spider, we'll draw a card off of the field spell, and then here we can make rank 8. Initially I choose to make Harbinger, but I later opt into Photon Lord just to be safe of a lingering Nibiru since that is the only other hand trap that can hit us at this point. So you see here, shuffle back the Harbinger, make the Photon Lord instead, and then we are going through the Gold Pride combo after we summon the Madam Spider and resolve its effect to get the trap card and also draw a card. So summon Captain Carry. Captain Carry will search start your engines. We'll XYZ summon Chariot Carry. Chariot Carry will activate to search better luck next time and also dump a gold pride name. We're gonna dump the rollerballer. I do play Nitro Head, but I believe that the rollerballer is a better interruption here since not everyone's on cash and not everyone's maining evenly. So Grab Leon, Leon will activate, summon the Rollerballer from Graveyard, and then we'll set our lovely four trap cards that we have in hand, Punk, 
Gold Pride is definitely not a trap deck, but sometimes it does feel like one. And then the Cherry Carry will bounce itself to summon the Cherry or the Captain Carry from Graveyard. I summon it from Graveyard because if you know what my deck list is, please check the description below if you'd like to see it, or my channel. It is the most recent deck profile I've posted. Basically, I'm not playing too many hand traps this format. It's only Imperm, Ash, and Ogre. And since we already have all those cards in hand, I'm perfectly fine with drawing into another cherry or another Captain Carry as an extender for next turn. Because otherwise, you would want to deck thin, but it's not necessary here. So, we pass our turn with a very formidable board. And you can see here, after some thoughts, my opponent will scoop. That is a very hard board to out, so I don't blame him. Really, if Gold Pride Punk gets to do its full combo, you're looking at a full combo board, really, with almost, in that case, it was like almost eight disruptions. Nothing you can really do about it. So we jump into game two, and he gets to go first. Since, of course, Bestial Control uh, is sort of an extent of Dragon Link. Dragon Link wants to go first, usually, and so he opts to go first. We actually Chaos Space here. Chaos Space is the best Ash target in Bestials and in Dragon Link. So fortunately, we're able to stop that, though he does have a good combo here in the form of Black Metal Dragon, Link Off, Summons Strike Dragon, Boot Sector Launch is in hand, as he told me later down the line, but he still has some neat plays here. So summon the Darkest Metal Dragon by banishing the Strike Dragon. Darkest Metal Dragon will summon back the Black Metal Dragon. Or sorry, the Safer that he had in Graveyard by discarding off of the Chaos Space. The Safer will search the Lubelion, and this will give him access to the Bistio package. Something you want to know if you are familiar with Dragon Link, this is a modified version of Dragon Link that my friend had concocted, so I do want you to understand that there are some deck choices that might not line up with traditional Dragon Link deck lists that you've seen, so you have to excuse him for that, though his list is really cool. So he'll search Serenir off Lubelion. Serenir will summon itself by banishing the Lu Dark Metal Dragon. Then summon back Lubelion by sending Serenir to Grave. Serenir will get to dump the Branded Regained, and then Lubelion will get to search the Branded Beast, which is an amazing trap card. Essentially a pseudo Icarus attack that can also set Branded cards from Grave. Or sorry, not set them, but activate them. So Seals is made with the Lubelion plus the um, safer. You'll see here that he initially makes it with the Darkest Metal Dragon, but takes it back. We go into Hieratic Seals. The Book of Moons in hand unfortunately don't do anything for me here, um, but I didn't know that because game one, even though we do know each other's decks, we're treating it as an actual match, and in actual matches, you won't know what your opponent's playing game one, so you can't make fake calls on that. So going into game two, since he had chosen not to reveal anything game one, I couldn't decide for Bestials or for Dragon Link, so I kept the Book of Moons in, assuming it might have been, you know, Pearly, Kashtir, or anything else. So, the rest of his combo resolves here, save for Azul Belion back to hand for follow-up, and he passes turn. Branded Beast will search the regain, and we get to draw. e -Tally is a perfect top deck here, because right now the Book of Moons don't do anything, and we're facing down both a Seals, which can bounce out normal summon, and a Branded Beast, which can pop anything that we summon. So my play here, as you will see, what I first try to do is bait out the seals. We do this by normal summoning the Zayman. He doesn't choose to bounce it or pop it yet, which is good for us because we're able to resolve its effect to search an additional extender. And when we resolve Zayman, we're going to search the Deer Note here. The reason why I search Deer Note and not Foxy Toon or Ogre Dance is because I don't want to give him Bissiel names in Graveyard, or sorry, Light or Dark names in my Graveyard for him to banish and summon his Bestials for free. I want to force him to summon the Bestials instead, using his graveyard. So we search the Deer Note instead, because I know that we can turbo out Wagon and get to the field spell if need be. Which is what we do here. We activate, or sorry, I initially want to Itali here, but I realize I can bait out the Seals still by going to battle phase, and I do that. We bait out the Seals, and instead of bouncing my Zayman, he chooses to bounce the Darkest Metal Dragon. You can see here we go back and forth. And then the seals will summon a magnum up from deck to give him follow up for next turn. So after this particular interaction resolves, we go to main phase two. E Telly out the wagon. 
I get the Wagon out first because the Wagon can draw a card if any rare names are being targeted. Branded Beast does target, and so if at any point he decides to try and pop in any of our names, we get to draw a card. So Wagon will search the field spell, and then after this we'll go into Sherkusai. And so Sherkusai summons itself, goes into Rising Carp, and this most certainly baits out the Branded Beast. The reason why is because if the Rising Carp were to resolve for us, that would be a big problem for him, so this gets it out of the way. And we do get the draw off of Wagon, that's why it's important to have Wagon when you can. We draw into a third Book of Moon, which does really nothing for us here, but I guess it's nice to have. We activate Extreme Session and try to go down the rest of the punk line. So, Extreme Session, summon out the Deer Note by banishing Zayman instead of Shere Kusai. We go into Dragon Drive. Dragon Drive will be Chainlink 2, Deer Note Chainlink 1, again to dodge Bell and Meister. Deer Note will summon back the Wagon. In retrospect, I should have summoned out the Sherkusai since that was given me more options. The reason why I don't, the reason why I also searched Ghost Ogre instead of a punk name here for follow-up is because I was very ballsy and tried to top deck a Cold Pride Extender and it doesn't quite get me there, it's like a raw Cosmic Cyclone. So I'm left with no follow-up and the only option I have here is to make Psychic and Punisher because making a Mason Dragon doesn't really do much for us here. We can bounce his Serenir and his Branded Spells and Traps, but then he can just reset them and get a free Serenir summon during his turn, so. We go into Psychic and Punisher, set 4 cards, and hope for the best. During end phase, Magnum will add Chaos Emperor, and then we'll go to his turn. So again, just to emphasize the mistakes made during that turn, I should have summoned back the Sherkusai because that would have given me more options in terms of disruptions in Psychic and Punisher. It is hard for him to out, but it doesn't disrupt him in any ways. It also doesn't give us any follow-up. Speaking of follow-up, we sort of searched a punk name off of the Dragon Drive because that would have guaranteed us follow-up. Now we're in a top deck position instead. So we go to main phase one, Blue Bellion, search Magnemut. And then I think here, summon safer, we book a moon it. I want to make sure it doesn't get to graveyard. However, I make the mistake of not realizing that Branded Beast can still tribute the Seyfert because even though Seyfert is face down, it is still recognized as a dragon on his side of the field. So I'm forced to Cosmic Cyclone it so that he doesn't pop any of our other cards. And so from here, the Seyfert is unfortunately able to resolve and he grabs Levineer. And the Levineer is going to transition into popping our two Book of Moons. You'll see here that he does take back the Serenir attack. The reason why is because he realizes that um, he can just Levineer, pop the Book of Moons, and so Levineer, pop the two cards. Now I'm left with only a Psychic and Punisher, and he'll still go to battle phase, try to lower his life points as much as possible. I choose not to gain attack so that it's harder for him to out, because if we boosted it up to 59, he would be in a lower life point situation, and he would be able to out the Psychic and Punisher then and there, which would then give us no sort of plays next turn. So here, dump Baldrake, summon Darkness Metal Dragon by banishing Levineer, regain will activate draw a card, and then he'll eventually make seals after summoning a Magnum. And so from here, uh, we draw start your engines for turn. Kind of sucks to see because it doesn't really give us anything immediately. We can start your engines the next turn, but since we don't have any gold pride names in grave, that doesn't really give us that much option. So really, this game ends up being lost as you will see. I'm just going to fast forward because I'll attack over the Baldrake. I don't attack over the seals because there's no reason for me to. Um, and he's able to out it by going Serenir attacking into the Psychic and Punisher, lowering his life points after some... You can see there, there was some confusion. Uh, the life points go up and down. It's because he decides to rearrange his attack so that Serenir attacks first instead of the Druid Swarm. Then the Druid Swarm will attack out the Psychic and Punisher. And after this, the Levineer will drop down during main phase 2, and we'll lose our entire game. So, yeah, in hindsight, again, 
Should have summoned the Syracusite back, that would have given us amazing dragon for potential disruption. And then we should have also searched follow up instead of searching a ghost over trying to be policy to draw the gold by name off of the field spell. Now we go into game three. Game three is interesting. I have to go first. We draw into a very poor hand. This is why we don't always want to have too many gold pride names in deck and or in hand because if you don't get access to the punk engine you are stuck with gold pride names in hand with nothing else to do so here we're forced to just normal summon the captain carry and then search start your engines he does roll me but that doesn't affect us too much and we pass we do have three interruptions though he does that evenly which sucks for us we keep the start your engines because that's the card that gives us the most follow up for next turn since we can summon out a punk name and potentially recur it off of the Leon. So Chaos Space activates Circus Waver Buster. This is the best start your engines target here. Reason why is because we see that the Collapse Serpent is banished so we can't float into it which essentially negs him a lot of advantage. So here start your engines bops the Waver Burster that gives us a ton of advantage here. We summon out the Captain Carry after he finishes his roll. And even and even though the Chaos Space is able to shuffle back the Black Dragon Collapse Serpent here, there is nothing else for him to do because he top decks, doesn't have any normal summons, fortunately for us, and he passes turn. Good for us, we top deck into Foxy Tune. And there's two lines of plays we could have made here. You'll see what I do eventually. Basically, we could normal summon the Leon and go into the Gold Pride engine to try and bait out hand traps, or we can go into the Punk engine by discarding the Foxy Tune to bait out hand traps. Either way, we'll most likely bait out an Ash or Imperm. In this line, I choose to go for the bait the engine out with the Punk engine instead. So, we discard the Foxy Tune. Foxy Tune will summon out the Zaman. Zaman will search a I believe share Kusai here. We'll go into Rising Carp, and so far no hand shots have been dropped. The Rising Carp is really the make or break point, but even then, it isn't the break point because we have Leon for follow up. We go into Rising Carp, and great for us, he has no hand traps to stop us. And so we're able to go into our punk engine. I'm still worried that maybe he has a Nibiru or any sort of disruption that would stop us from going for game. So you'll see here, after I do our usual punk plays, I will go into the Photon Lord. I'm going to fast forward here because it makes it easier for me. So we do this, we go into a Photon Lord to potentially stop a Nibiru, and then we hit the point where we're accessing the Gold Pride Engine. So Madam Spider, search Dangerous Gabu, that will trigger the field spell to draw one, go into Carry Carry, we already have start your engines in hand, but since we play two, or sorry, better luck next time in hand, we'll search the other copy. The only name we're missing here is the Rollerballer. So I'll search the Rollerballer here, summon Leon, summon back the Nectar Head as a big body, summon the Rollerballer after that, and we'll attempt to go for game during the battle phase. What is nice about this is if he has any Basilius in hand, we could either suck them up with the Rollerballer Fusion Monster, or we can negate them with the Photon Lord. So really, he doesn't have too much else here, unless he had like Nibiru plus double Bestial. You'll see here he has one Bestial. I don't care if he summons it, because we can roll ball of that away. And so that's why I let him summon it, because immediately after that, ignore these attack patterns, but I activate the Rollerballer, summon the Pinballer, suck with the Serenir, continue to threaten game, and he does have Baldrake, but we have the Photon Lord negate, and so at this point, we have won the game. So hopefully you all enjoyed that replay. I know that the commentary is a little bit all over the place. I'm new to this, so I'm trying my best to do what I can. Again, if you have any comments on how I did the commentary, anything during the game that you think I could have done better while dueling, please let me know in the comments below. Or if you just want to say hi, you can always say hi too. Otherwise, remember to like and subscribe. It does help the channel grow. I appreciate all of you, and so I appreciate all of your support, therefore. Otherwise, this is Toon World. Thank you for watching this Punk vs. Bestial Control replay, and I will cue the outro.